Hello children, this is Roshni from Learno Hub, the free learning platform where you can learn anything and everything absolutely for free at learnohub.com. So today we are going to talk about the third video of the video series on electricity and circuits class 6 science. Now you must be wondering that we have already covered all the concepts and all the theory and the new things that we had to learn in this lesson. So what are we going to do today in this video? So in this video, we are going to take up questions, questions and questions. And as we all know that questions are very important, right? Because they tell us how much of the concepts have we really understood. It will also give you an idea how to approach a question, like how do you exactly answer a question? So this is going to be super useful. So do not miss out any of the questions. So watch all the question and that will be like a super revision for you. And this will also build your confidence confidence and if you knew all the answers to these questions do let me know in the comment section so what are we waiting for let's get started question number one fill in the blanks a device that is used to break an electric circuit is called so what is that device which some which can complete the circuit and which can break the circuit as well? It is nothing but an electric switch. An electric cell has dash terminals. How many terminals are present? There are two terminals, positive terminal and negative terminal. Question number two. Mark true or false for following statements. Electric current can flow through metals. True, that's because Metals are good conductors of electricity. Instead of metal wires, a jute string can be used to make a circuit. False. That's because metal wires are good conductors of electricity. But when you talk about jute, they are insulators. So they do not allow current to pass through them. So we cannot use them to make a circuit. Electric current can pass through a sheet of thermocol. What about thermocol? Is it conductor or insulator? It is insulator. So again, electric current cannot pass through it. So this statement is also false. Question number three. Explain why the bulb would not glow in the arrangement shown in the figure. So here you have a battery. Okay. So this is the positive terminal of the battery. This is the negative terminal of the battery. And this battery is connected to the bulb. So this is connected to two different terminals of the bulb, which is correct. This is one terminal. This is another terminal. And then there is another substance which is there in the circuit. And this substance is what? It is nothing but a screwdriver. So we can see that as electric cell is present, the circuit is also complete, right? The way the battery is connected to the bulb, that is also correct. So what's wrong here? The incorrect part is that the screwdriver has a handle. This part of the screwdriver is made up of a material which is insulator because normally screwdrivers have uh, this portion is made up of metal which is good conductor but this part is mostly made up of plastics or any other insulator in order to because screwdrivers are used by electricians to work on circuits so to protect them from electric shock these are made up of insulators and that is why since an insulator is present in the circuit therefore the bulb doesn't glow so the plastic handle of the screwdriver is an insulator so it doesn't allow electric current to pass through and that is why the bulb doesn't glow Question number four, complete the drawing shown in the figure to indicate where the free ends of the two wires should be joined to make the bulb glow. So this is the initial figure where this is a switch and you have these two wires and you have to connect the bulb correctly with the battery. So you see this is the positive terminal of the battery, this is the negative terminal of the battery. So both terminals of battery should be connected to two different terminals of the bulb. So in the bulb you have this terminal from the rib case and you have this terminal from the base. So from the base this terminal is connected to one end of the switch and the other end is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So this is how the circuit would be complete and in this scenario the bulb would also glow. Question number five. 
What is the purpose of using an electric switch? Name some electrical gadgets that have switches built into them. So switches are primarily used to complete or break the circuit. So when it completes the circuit, then current flows through the circuit. When it breaks the circuit, then current stops flowing through the circuit. For example, when we put the electric switch on, the bulb glows, the electric fan gets on that's because current flows through the circuit and when we switch it off they stop similarly in washing machine in television sets everywhere you have switches you talk about mixer grinders you talk about microwaves everything operate on switches so switches are present in a lot of electrical appliances would the bulb glow after completing the circuit as shown in the figure if instead of safety pin we use an eraser so this was the initial circuit so the question is, if we complete this circuit, so how did we complete the circuit? We completed the circuit in this way. That is by connecting the two ends of the uh, key to the bulb as well as the battery. And in this case, the bulb started glowing. Now the question is, if we replace the safety pin, so here we had safety pin. Now instead of safety pin, if we put an eraser, now safety pin is made up of metal and metal is a good conductor of electricity but if you replace it with eraser, eraser is made up of rubber and rubber is an insulator that is it doesn't allow current to pass through it since it doesn't allow current to pass through it so electric current will not flow through the circuit and therefore the bulb would not glow. So the bulb would not glow because eraser is a poor conductor of electricity. Question number seven, would the bulb glow in the circuit shown in the figure? So here you see the bulb and the battery, they are connected in this fashion. So do you think it will glow? So this is the positive end of the battery. This is the negative terminal of the battery. The bulb also has two different terminals. This is one terminal and which is the other terminal? The base of the bulb is other terminal. So in this case, you see both the positive and negative terminal of the batteries are connected to the same terminal of the bulb. Instead of this, one of these should have been connected to the base terminal of the bulb. So therefore, the bulb would not glow because both terminals of the cell are connected to the same terminal of the bulb. So how can we rectify this circuit? So if we connect it in this way, that is this positive terminal instead of being connected to the same terminal, it should be connected to the base terminal of the bulb. So in that case, the bulb would glow. Question number eight. Use the conduction tester on an object. It was found that the bulb begins to glow. Is that object a conductor or an insulator? So let's say this is that object. So when you put this object in the circuit and you see that the bulb starts glowing, that means current is flowing through the circuit. That means this material is allowing current to flow through the circuit. So this is definitely an, a conductor. And this type of circuit is called a conduction tester circuit. Question number nine, why should an electrician use rubber gloves while repairing an electric switch at your home? Now, normally an electrician has to handle with the electric wires and other electric appliances. So the chances of getting an electric shock is more with electricians, you know, because they deal with wires which are carrying electric current. They deal with live wires. So to, now we know that human body is good conductor of electricity as I had mentioned before. So if he touches any live wire with his hands, he will definitely get a huge electric shock. So to, just to avoid that, if he uses rubber gloves, so rubber is a poor conductor of electricity. So it will not allow current to pass through it and therefore the human body or the body of the electrician would also be protected against electric shock. So rubber being an insulator, it protects the electrician from electric shock. Question number 10. The handles of the tools like screwdrivers and pliers used by electricians for repair work usually have plastic or rubber covers on them. Can you explain why? If you look at these kind of instruments, they will always have plastic coverings. So these are the handles. These are the places where through which the electrician hold these tools. For example, when he has to use a screwdriver, the electrician would hold it from here. When he has to use the plier, he would hold it from here. So again, why is he dealing with these tools? Because he, he uses these tools to work on electric circuits. So these tools 
are in direct contact with a lot of wires where current is flowing through them. So therefore, again, if these are made up of good conductors, in that case, the current will flow through them. And again, the current will flow through the human body and the electrician will get an electric shock. So therefore, these are made up of materials which are insulators. So plastic or rubber is an insulator. So again, that would protect the electrician from electric shock while working with these tools because the presence of these insulator handles, they prevent direct contact of the electrician's body with the electric current flowing through the wires and the various appliances. So that's how it gives him protection. So with this, we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that this lesson on electricity and circuits would have helped you to understand the basics of electric current, the basics of an electric circuit, how an electric circuit works. And what I would advise you is uh, please try to understand how these things happen. Try to observe the operation of a switch at your home. Try to observe how a torch works. Try to see the presence of the batteries inside your remote. And you can do all these things yourself. So just have a look at all these things around yourself so you will find whatever you have studied just now all the more interesting so i hope this lesson would have helped you so see you all in the next lesson. i hope that my dear children you would have found this video on electricity and circuits useful if at all you have a feedback to share with me or you want me to know something about your experience with this lesson do let me know in the comment section i'll make sure that i read your comment and also reply to it Okay, and I will meet you all very soon with the next video with a new topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.